Bobby Torres of Fightbox according here to show you how to mix heavy bass within Reaper. So within this tutorial, not only will I be showing you how to mix heavy bass tracks within Reaper, I'll be showing you how to do it using only stock plugins that come with Reaper. And also you could download this exact Reaper session. There's a link below right within the video's description so you can mix along at home. The session is the exact same one that I'm using in this tutorial. So you'll have all of my plugin settings along with the exact files. So again, if you'd like access to this session, the link's below within the video's description. So without any further ado, I'm gonna play the audio sample back and then I'm gonna dissect piece by piece exactly how I'm achieving this bass tone within this metal mix. Let's check it out. So I'm a huge fan of this type of bass tone where you can actually hear the notes being played. Now a lot of times bass ends up getting lost in the mix, especially if it's a busy metal production, and the key is to make the mid-range work. So let's see what's happening with these tracks. I have two bass tracks, a bass amp track as well as a bass distortion track. Now the bass distortion track is using the plain bass DI, and the bass amp track is the tone that was recorded when I recorded the track. And I have a bunch of plugins happening on both tracks, as well as an EQ on the bass submix. So if you follow along, I have two bass tracks and they are being submixed through this bass sub. And I'm simply using the folder track system within Reaper to route these two tracks through that submix. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna bypass all of these plugins and let's listen to what the bass amp sounds like. <laughs> Okay, pretty decent tone. The thing is, is that the low end is a little inconsistent and a little lumpy. So first in my chain, I'm simply using the Rhea EQ just to filter off all of the frequencies below about 60 Hertz and all of the frequencies above around 5K. Now I'm high passing to make room for the kick and I'm low passing to make room for the cymbals, top end of the vocal, top end of the guitars, instruments that belong in that range. Most of the time, anything above around 5K on a bass is just noise frequency that you really don't need. So I just opt to get rid of it. Let's take a look at some of the settings. I have the auto release setting and a relatively slow attack. Let's take a look at how much gain reduction is taking place within the compressor. Okay, so I'm compressing the bass at most about 7 dB, which is not too extreme at all. This alone will help even out my bass sound. Now I prefer to take it a step further and even out my bass sound on the low end even more by using a brick wall limiter after my compressor. And in this case, I'm using one of the JS plugins, the limiter plugin that comes with Reaper, and it does a great job of taming the peaks that my compressor might be missing. So let's take a listen to what this limiter is doing to my bass amp. Yeah, so it's keeping a tight cap on top of my bass sound so my low end is nice and consistent. So all in all, I have my EQ getting rid of the frequencies I don't need. I have my compressor that's helping even out the bass tone and my limiter is keeping a nice solid lid on my bass sound so it's unmoving within my mix. And again, I'm using all stock plugins that come free with Reaper. So if you download this session, as long as you have Reaper installed on your computer, it'll open up just fine. So I always like to add a little bit of distortion in with my bass sound in parallel in order to help bring out the mid range. Adding these extra harmonics in the mid range really helps the bass be a little more audible on small speakers. So you gotta remember small speakers like on your phone or your laptop or tablet or whatever are not going to be reproducing super low frequencies. So doing this will really help your bass be heard. So let's take a listen to what my bass DI sounds like. So that's just a plain bass DI with nothing on it, no amp, nothing, no tone at all. And the first thing I like to do is I like to add a basic distortion plugin. Now let's take a listen to what this distortion plugin is doing.
So it's adding a little bit of grit to the DI track. Now, this is not the final tone. I use this distortion to help drive the amp sim, which is coming up next in my chain, but I prefer to do it before my EQ. So after the distortion, I have a basic EQ filter. Now, I'm not shy with the high and low pass filters. I'm filtering out everything below around 700 hertz and everything above around 4K. This is because I want to send only that range to the amplifier. And by amplifier, I mean the amp sim that comes free with Reaper. So let's listen to what this filter is doing to the tone. Yeah, it almost kind of sounds like a radio effect. So now I take this distorted and filtered tone and send it to the amp sim. And this is just the stock amp sim that comes with Reaper. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So as you can tell, it's adding even more saturation to this mid range. Now, the reason why I prefer the filter before the amp is I like the sound of the amp being driven only by the frequencies that I'm using. So again, I'm only using the mid range and those are the only frequencies that I want to drive the amplifier with. The problem now is that sometimes the preamp, the preamp that I'm using or an amp sim that I'm using will generate extra harmonics in the low end and top end. And in order to combat this, I add another plugin that's doing the exact same filtering. So if you follow along, I'm distorting the signal, filtering it, sending it to the amp sim, and then filtering it again. Now let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So if you notice when I bypass this filter plugin, you hear extra low end, a little bit of extra top end. And that's because the amp sim is adding this to the original sound. So I wanna get rid of it before the signal hits the next plugin in my chain. Okay, so from there, we just have another compressor. Let's take a listen. This compressor is doing nothing extreme. It's just compressing my signal by about three dB at max, maybe four or five, but nothing extreme. Again, I'm using the auto release and a relatively slow attack. That's because I wanna let some of the pick attack through on the track. And from there, we have another limiter to help keep a nice tight lid on the bass mid-range track. So this might sound extreme in solo, but I promise it's gonna work beautifully when I mix it in with the bass amp track. Now I noticed when I limited this track, I hear a little bit of high frequency distortion happening. So in order to help remedy this, I have another EQ, and this is just filtering out everything above around 3000 Hertz. Now this might seem like a lot of plugins on this track, but they're all doing very basic things. Just basic filtering, compression, limiting, and a little bit of distortion. And this track is not my main bass tone. This is only gonna be adding to my original bass tone to again, to help it cut through the mix and sound good on smaller speakers. Okay, so let's hear what the roll off is doing. Again, it's just helping get rid of some of that high frequency distortion that you really don't want in your mix. Okay, so with all that being said, let's listen to our original bass sound. So as you can tell, this extra distortion track really helps add extra presence to the original bass tone. Now I do have one more plugin happening and it's happening on my bass submix. So just to be clear, these two tracks are being sent to a bass submix track and this bass submix track has a little bit of EQ. I have around one dB being pulled out at 250 Hertz, about one dB being pulled out at 450 Hertz, nothing extreme. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the bass back in context and I'm gonna intermittently bypass that bass distortion. And I want you to take note of just how much it adds to the bass sound within the context of the mix. Let's check it out.
So there you go, not a bad little bass sound. And I'm doing all of this with just stock free plugins that come with Reaper. And Reaper is only a $60 DAW. Just another example of how you can get great results with very, very, very simple tools. And again, you could download this exact Reaper session that includes these exact files and all of my plugin settings. There's a link for you down below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of our weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And until next time, happy mixing.